Hello folks, welcome back to another vlog on this very, very frosty Saturday morning. Look at that. Lovely. Uh, be a very interesting vlog this week. Um, me and Sean are going to the Spade Town Brewery in Lurgan. And we're going to get a tour of the place and then we're going to sit down and record a podcast with the two lads. With two of the lads that own and run it. So that's what's happening this week's vlog. Um, big weekend for me and Sean in regards to football. And my family, I, I call it the family derby because West Ham play Liverpool. Now the last time we played Liverpool we beat them 3-2 but we were in a lot better form then. And uh, I'm, we're not in good form at the minute so I'm not expecting much out of it and Liverpool are going for the title now so. Sure, we'll see, we'll see what mood I'm in. When we go up to Spade Town I might end up breaking the fucking drink ban and getting blocked. No, I'll not be doing that. But, uh, have a bet with Smitty. But anyway, I'll, I'll leave us there for now. Make it a wee bit done dusted or recorded throughout the day once I wake up and and that. So we'll see anyway. But yeah, heading to Spade Town tomorrow and we'll be releasing the episode with the two lads this Sunday. So if you're watching this on the Monday, the episode is out now. But I'll, I'll have to put on the socials here. There's going to be a late release on Sunday evening by the time I get it uploaded so I'll leave you there for now I'm gonna get home and get out of this cold because she's fucking built a okay. right ciao hello S hoppers how you all getting on hope you've had a great weekend um I've had a good weekend like I have to say so far big day for the lads of the day that's why there hasn't been much content from Friday Saturday because it's all about the day of the Sunday um myself and Adam are heading up to Spade Town Brewery um Gonna go up, get a bit of vlogging done there, get a podcast done, try to get a hyperlapse as well. But yeah, that's the plan, and that's the reason of the lack of content this weekend. It's because we're hoping to get most of it done here today in the brewery. But we'll see how it goes, and it'll all be a bit of crack, and we'll get a podcast out tonight, and then this will be out on Monday or Tuesday, whatever day I'm to get out. But hopefully you enjoy it, because me and Adam are buzzing to get around this place, see what it's like, see what the local brewery's like, see how big it is, see what to get up to, see how they make the beers and stuff, so yeah. Let's see what happens next. Adam carrying the gear, that's what he's good for. Eat up. <laughs> Come on, get it. Ew. <laughs> Well, how's it going? Yeah, it looks, it looks a bit funky when I put it in the van on. Distributors, so we have two distributors, and then they're going to live out 50 off licenses, of course. So, the next wave, the next wave is to turn some of the beer into kegs. If you see outside, there's kegs all around. Yes, I've seen that on the way in. So, uh, and then we'll get them into the bars, and then we'll go back to County. We're we'll County now, coming, you see. Right. Which means we can then we'll split it, keg, can. We can just run off as many cans as we want. Yeah, uh, right now. now. Up until now, we've had contract canning, which yeah. basically means you got to empty what you've got into their cans Ways and they charge you a premium whereas when you have your own can and you don't run out of not about a thousand, not about ten kegs on a day whatever's moving you see Are you planning to like up the size of the tins as well or are you just going for the wee smaller ones? Well, do you know, we took a lot of feedback from people in the industry and they said people are moving towards 330s like, like historically craft beers was 440s everybody thought well you're getting nearly a pint and yeah. it's, it's more of a value for money and all that 
But the, the world is moving to standard production of 330s. So we're mm. sort of not going, we don't, same with bottles. Are yeah. Most bottles are 330 ounces. Uh, yeah. So when we got that stuff out of beer 52, it was all the uh, smaller tins. Yeah. See, Europe, if you, most of Europe now send standard A's on 330 tins, and some people will do 330 bottles. So we're trying to copy that and not you know, do yeah. something which we, down the line, either don't, we regret or don't sell enough of. I don't think you'd have a problem making 440s. Like, we do have the, the canning line to do them. Oh, the tins, uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, they're big, yeah. they're for smaller tins, yeah. they're that big. As far as just for courses, you know, but uh, it's a it pours into a cup and it's a good pour and you know, <laughs> means, means you get pieces. 900 of them in the end, right? <laughs> psychologically, you go 40, you're not in the head around about 14. Only 900? Only 900? Yeah. So they see there, 330. You know, that's, uh, that's a 330 glass and that's a pint okay. glass. So, you know, theoretically, you could open a couple of cans and fill that up. Our thinking was a four, sell them in four packs. If it's during the week, a four pack will never do you much damage. Exactly, that's very true. And, and it's at school night, and then at the weekend, if you want to go a bit further, you can get a couple cool. of four packs. And the thing <laughs> as well is, a lot of people are saying, when we first came out with our price, and people went, well, it's, it's a bit too expensive. But if you compare to a lot of other four packs in the market, they're in and around the same price. And people don't want to buy 12 cans necessarily, no, or 24 can. cans like we used to do. <laughs> 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 Not saying we're just the the No, walked. I walk this. I walk down this direction to work every day, so. Oh, do you? Where, where, where do you, do you work at Silverweed? Yeah. This is the tank you put the grains in, and uh, from there you extract your sugars. Right? The sugars that cause the damage. <laughs> and, and then you, you, you pass over to, this is a double system, you pass over to what's called the water tank, and that basically filters out the grains. Okay. Creates a stabilized grain bed, in which you pump, you pump the wort back. The wort being the sugary solution, then you boil it. That's when the sterilization phase begins. At that point, when it's sterile uh, and you boil it for an hour and you've added your hops to give you your flavoring and your bittering, fire it back in there and whirlpool it, and that removes a large chunk of the sediment. Right. Not all of it, but a very, very large component of it. Um, and that's and then you pump it into the tank, and that's why the tanks are conical at the bottom because over time, um, the sediment drops down to that cone, and you take your beer off at this point. You see. Yeah. And everything from here on down you don't touch because that's the sediment uh, portion. So this is a big ice lollies out of the bottom, but <laughs> <laughs> they get blocked the heart. Blocked the heart ice lollies. So this, this one uh, this one's actually madly fermenting. There's a lager in here, long faced lagers boiling away, so it's like Frankenstein's movie. What's happening is, let me show you this. This is an air trap called a spunding valve. So the pressure's going this way, i.e. it's generating CO2, it's live and fermenting. When that activity stops, you know the fermentation is complete. And then you enter into your chilling and your conditioning mode. So pour a wee bit of water in that just to keep the air trap tight. Not that. It's fuck mad. <laughs> that's all part of the crack. That's, that's a scientific term, fuck mad. Fuck mad, that's, fuck mad. that's, fuck mad. that's a lurking term, that is alright. It's alright. That, that's her that's live and kicking now. Um, so that's her actually producing alcohol. Oh, nice. When you put your snout to that, you'll smell the beer. Like. Want to like give her a sniffer, Sean? Fucking hell, alright, fuck. Yeah. That's a nice taste. That's a nice yeah, smell. Yeah. That is. That's, that's what you want to smell. <laughs> yes, that's 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 soup being made. As I say, lager. That's, that's a soup. soup. That's a soup. That's a soup. So that's that, that's a big system. So basically, you use your fermenters now. A lager, a lager will stay in that tank once the fermentation is complete for 42 days, and that gives you your your sort of golden color and your clarity. Yeah. You can see through the glass. Most crafty people uh, prefer not to make lagers for the duration of the conditioning. So this tank behind you here is an APA. Is there a glass here, Mark? I'll show you the yeah, glass. Yeah. Is there any glass here? The, the ones are connected. I want to be kitchen there. Yeah. And then I'll take you and show you the, the pilot. But while the, the weakest part of it is during the fermentation phase, when the tank's not fully alcoholic. So what you do is you always keep her keep her stir right. So I'm going to pour you some beer here. So this is the APA. This is ready to rock. We are, we are putting this in the kegs tomorrow. Um, so the process here is four days fermentation, 14 to 17 days conditioning. We've let this sit in for an extra four days because we're moving the tanks. Mm -hmm. But tomorrow we're going to empty it. But here's lathe. Beer being born, boys. And this is the APA. Lurgan, long face, no, sorry, APA, we call it. APA, Yeah, so that's fresh out of the tank. So, you see in Lurgan, get that into your noggin. Get that into <laughs> Get it into you. Yeah. 
Go ahead, our side. First track since Christmas? <laughs> Not sure it's a big enough head in that morning. I know it's heavily, but. It's dead. It's, it's just very active, boys, when she comes out of the tank. Folks, just out of the Spade Town brewery there. We're still walking. Still going. Not stumbling. It's 
Uh, had a couple of, couple of pints? Aye, well, I was allowed. I had two. That's what I was allowed. No, you didn't get one. So there were two half pints. I had one pint. I had one pint. Uh, no, the lads were very accommodating. It was very, very good. Freaking brilliant, but I'll tell you what. When they get that place up and run the way they want it, like the way they've been explaining to us, they're a bit of legislation holding them back at the minute to, to stop them operating to the general public. But when that place gets up and run, unbelievable. As everybody knows, this year me and Sean are trying to keep it local, get uh, as many local people on as possible. And like them boys, like they're only really starting out on their fucking flan. Their flan, like they're unbelievable what they've done with the branding and like the way they talk to us, you'll hear in the episode, um, you love us out yesterday, you'll hear it. Unbelievable, just the two guys have so much knowledge, it's unbelievable. Like, honestly, ridiculous. I like they're the same background as us, like the same schools and the same schools. Like, it's all awesome. some heckles, we've done that. One went to university, I went to university. One, one did, one didn't. One didn't, you didn't. I didn't. But um, yeah, the guys are unbelievable, fantastic. But again, hopefully get working with them sometime very soon in the near future. Get back up. There's more to, there's more to that place than what we got today. Maybe you want to see more, and I like beer. <laughs> and they said, um, when my year um, of not drinking is up, I'm allowed to go up and get black. Yep. So. And I'll be there too. <laughs> folks, thanks very much for watching this week's vlog. Hope you enjoyed the footage that we got of the brewery. Um, and I hope you enjoyed the episode, it was very, very good. And hopefully big things are coming for the boys because that was a step out of our comfort zone. We've never met these boys before and we just... It was, it was grand. Unbelievable, I loved it. I it was good. It. So, I'm going to call you shit talkers or ass sappers or something. I haven't really got a name for you folks watching and listening yet. I've started calling them ass sappers because you me, do, like. But shit talkers come on. Shit talkers, hi. Don't you sorry as our mates. We're all friends. We're all friends. Gang zangs. <laughs> <laughs> Right, well, that is that out. <laughs> no, I won't. Alright, folks, uh, he's been Sean. He's been Adam. And we'll talk to you all ASAP.